Instagram again and I have a few things to say. Last week Elise put out, I think it was last week, Elise put out a video where she went, uh, where she was talking about uh, her natural form of birth control which is Natural Cycles. It's an app where you can um, track your cycles and track your fertility and use that as your form of natural birth control. I think I've come to one singular point <laughs> and I, it's what I, what I really want to start with here when it comes to Elise's last birth control video and that is that this isn't even about Elise the way I feel. I just don't think that any influencer should be sponsored by a medical device. Because that's weird. Natural Cycles has in the past received uh, criticism for the way that they have advertised themselves through PR marketing with influencers. So Lisa isn't the only one who's received criticism for this. And I agree. Um, I mean, think about it. It'd be weird if you saw an influencer being sponsored by, by a brand of insulin or by an EpiPen brand. Surgical Mesh, another medical device. It would be strange and wouldn't be okay. It wouldn't be okay. Maybe a little bit more thought should have been given to being sponsored by a medical device. Um, in the end, sponsorships, you know, people get sponsored because that company wants to sell more. I don't think that should be the point. <laughs> I don't think that should be a goal or the point of a medical device. Um, so that's that's kind of my main point. And then, so it happened, right? Let's talk about it. It happened. Elise was sponsored by a medical device brand. Um, I'm glad she said in her video that she was sponsored um, later towards the video. Last I checked, Elise's link in her description box did not say that it was a sponsored link. Um, I know that you could listen to the video and she did say it uh, somewhere in the video. Um, I think that's debatable. I'm not sure on the laws on that. It, it was hard to find exactly what what the rules are on that. Um, I certainly don't know. And as for the brand itself, it is FDA approved. Um, it did have to be approved in a new category because it is the first of its kind uh, to be approved. I know Elise said 98% um, effective, so a 2% rate of pregnancy with perfect use. Um, that is the perfect use rate. The typical use is 7%, so that's 93% effective. And with a 95% confidence interval, the low end of that would be 9.1% risk of pregnancy. Um, and that is from Natural Cycle's own study. Uh, they came into FDA approval with three studies, I believe. They have more studies now. However, there is concern, I, from what I've read, there is concern that they have not actually, they have not gone through the gold standard of a randomized controlled trial. Yep, <laughs> that's all I really have to say about that. Look, if you want to use natural cycles, that is up to you. Uh, if Elise wants to do natural cycles, that's great. I'm like, that's your thing. I just think the only thing anyone should be telling anybody is talk to your doctor. And like, that's it. No sponsorships. And that's just because some people might want to use this natural form of birth control, but they might have underlying conditions that would make it dangerous, that would make it ineffective. Um, and that's why they need input from a doctor, someone who knows the nuances of th these things. In fact, Natural Cycles has a website that is specifically for uh, providers for health providers. In fact, to go in, I had to press something that said, yes, I'm a medical provider. I'm not a medical provider, but I pressed yes. It does uh, outline who uh, natural cycles would be good for and who it would not be good for. And it does bring up things that have been brought up, brought up in the comments of Elisa's section, that if your cycles aren't regular, certain underlying health conditions, if, um, if you have maybe a lifestyle where um, you drink here, you don't wake up at the exact same time every day, do not move until you, you know, if you can't keep the rigor of this process, then you shouldn't do it. And if you're in a point in life where getting pregnant, this is 
this is this is what they say if you're in a point in life where you don't want to be pregnant and it would cause you great distress to be pregnant pregnant at that point in your life maybe talk to your and um, that's kind of the point of this website maybe talk to your patient about maybe you know whether or not you really want to use this form of birth control so this is a conversation to be had with the doctor not on social media and so like i said i just want to get across this isn't purely an elitist thing this is influencers should not be sponsored by uh medical devices um influ to tag along with that maybe influencers maybe shouldn't be making nutritional supplements which they do um and why do they because there's a lack of regulation that's it um let me know if i left anything out i know this was a quick one that i really wanted to get out there um i just had some feelings um yeah have a good one stay safe um take care of yourself bye and remember astrazeneca may be able to help <laughs>